Welcome everyone to the Reimagine series. Um, I'm your host, Chris Jonu, and I'm lucky enough to have Adam Seville with me today from SAP. Um, and is it, do people call it SAP or SAP? What's the, what's the go-to? <laughs> <laughs> well, we call it SAP, but um, plenty of people call it SAP. So, you know, I can understand either really. So, and, and then I, um, um, I can appreciate a good background. I got to acknowledge that first um, <laughs> uh, with Adam's background there. And um, look, I, I invited yourself on um, with the context to try and, you know, talk about innovation, you know, particularly now as it, uh, change it as it changes at an ever increasing pace uh, with the idea to try and help inspire other leaders in industry and and um, try and you know as, as I mentioned get people out of their heads and thinking um, more about opportunities that are out there um, as opposed to just survival or writing this thing out and stuff like that so that's that's pretty much the premise of it um, could I ask Adam yeah, and thank you, thank you for for for, for joining us. Um, can I ask? You know, you got quite an interesting career there. If you could just give a bit of context to to the audience as to um, how you ended up as one of the innovation managers at SAP. <laughs> uh, sure. So I, I mean, it's a bit of a winding journey. Uh, you know, when I was at uni, I got um, asked to go and work with a startup steel company, and. Which, which isn't your typical startup uh, that we, we kind of hear about these days. But um, at the time, you know, it was an importer of uh, steel and it was just sort of built from the ground up with investment. Um, and so I got involved in driving the forklift and doing things like that. Um, and kind of they got acquired. So, you know, it's like one of those um, <laughs> stories, you know, <laughs> that we hear, hear about so often now. Uh, they, got, they got acquired and... Um, I took a role in the in the acquiring company. Um, moved moved more into a, I, was, I was sort of in business role, so I moved more into a sales role. And no one really knew IT much. You know, they had an, an old system, and you know, they were still we were standing faxes. You know, we had memes by fax back then. So, but I had the you know storage drawer full of uh, faxes that I'd send out to my friends. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I just, you know, introduced, uh, was in the right place at the right time, I think. It introduced Novel Network and um, Windows for Work Groups and all those good things. And uh, yeah, over the years, we, you know, implemented SAP, for example, which is how I got involved in that. Uh, I went to work for a, a mobile, a, a, you know, smaller mobile technology company here in Australia uh, and did a lot of different projects. Um, and I guess over the years, I just worked with businesses sort of like, what's the business process? What's the technology? How do you connect the two? So my innovation yeah. focus has been, you know, in, in, to be fair, has been very technology focused. Mm -hmm. So not so much on designing a new product or a new um, widget, but more on how to join the gap between technology and business. Yeah, which would be uh, a great skill set to have right now. <laughs> yeah, when you're, uh, you've got no choice. We're both in Melbourne, right? So we're both uh, enjoying the lockdown in our garages with great exactly. backgrounds. Well, exactly, exactly. Well, I, yeah, I set up a studio here. I almost caught the um, the place on fire with my first attempt. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, I was just sitting here and it was started smoking out the back, and I was oh, no, not great. <laughs> um, bad, uh, bad wiring that I I did. Um, anyway, first time, first time. Um, first time through. So, as you know, like as I'm, uh, I'm talking to you know, you know, leaders in industry like yourself, I, I, I'm really, I'm really interested in seeing like, you know, from a kind of a macro perspective or you know your own personal perspective, what you see working at the moment and and what you kind of recommend um, steering clear of. Yeah. Okay. It's a it's an interesting question. I mean, uh, for us in the in the setting that I work in, in you know, in a, in a corporate environment, um, albeit from home now, uh, we've we've over the years kind of built up um, a process, and I, I think you know the term gets thrown around a lot. But you know, uh, for, for example, one of our founders, Hasso Platner, is is really strong on design thinking, and I don't know if you're familiar with Hasso Platner Institute, but. That, that's something that's kind of permeated our whole organization. Um, and it, it was a willful effort. You know, it took a, a top-down effort. And, uh, 
But now we see, I guess, the fruits of that in that we are using it, those techniques and tools and, and maybe not the whole process all the time, but anytime we have a new team or we want to do something a bit different or how can we get over here? Is it worth doing something? We're using those techniques internally with, with groups. And I think that kind of mindset whether you call it an agile mindset or a human centered design sort of mindset or something, I think for us that that's really helped, uh, you know, put, put people and purpose uh, in front of the things that we do. Absolutely. And, and I, I, I think for me, I, I, I think that's been really valuable. It's, it's helped our employees and our customers, um, you know, sort of, steer towards something with a sense of purpose uh, and, and be able to discard things like feel free to bubble things up, but then if they're not valuable, okay, we'll, we'll try it a different way. Um, so, so I think that mindset has been really important. So do you, is that, is that going back to um, thinking about the customer, you know, um, each time, how, where does the, and thinking about the problem as, as they're kind of arising even now and then kind of, going back to the drawing board about how you can best deliver a, a service or a new product. How does that kind of, you know, um, you know, kind of work, go through the organization? I, th I, I think in terms of, yeah, yeah. So obviously, you know, uh, pur purpose and customer uh, are really important to us and in the experience that the different stakeholders or people have. Uh, is really integral. Um, I, I, I think, you know, if, if you think about those pre, like concepts of design, about feasibility, scalability, desirability, viability, that we try and use those in whatever we're doing. So imagine we've got a new team. How's this team going to work together? Well, let's, let's use some of those tools to think about um, maybe it's brainstorming or maybe it's... Um, you know, validating or, or doing a, some sort of mock-up or trying something or building a straw man, whatever you want to call it, um, and seeing if that works and, and having that freedom to kind of express those things without without kind of feeling like, oh, hang on, that, maybe that's a bad idea. I shouldn't say something. Um, I think using those techniques has really helped us. So that, that's not necessarily about solving a customer's problem um, directly, but it's about ensuring that we have uh, our own internal business under control so that we can then help our customers. Yeah. So almost like, I want to say the, the freedom, the freedom to like a safe environment for experimentation, right? It's, if it doesn't quite work, we, we learn from it and, you know, iterate, move on, scrap it. Right. It's Correct. kind of, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, so we do that formally, but you know, uh, and, and we also do it informally. So, so we have a lot of programs and things, obviously, within uh, our organization. Some are public facing, some are internal things that we do to try and innovate. Um, and are they, are they, I'm just, you know, maybe getting a bit off topic here, but are they kind of pre-sold to customers? Is that, is that an easy way to see if there's a, are you thinking about the market before you, you know, just talking to customers as, as into like, Hey, what do you think? We're looking at this, and does this, you know, this is a problem you're solving, or are they are they very much knocking on the door and saying, you know, we banging on the door and saying we need this? We have both, so you know, we we have a community within of users, if you like. Um, so that that gives us some strength in being able to get feedback, you know, often quite candid feedback about what our products and services are doing. Um, and so we we are able to leverage that, um, but we we also do it the other way. So we have teams like a ventures group. We have a SAP IO uh, that is really about startups. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, ventures is more say something in more internal, but it does a lot of external facing work. But it will look at market opportunities and do business case analysis, and then put up business cases to say hey, there's a gap here, um, you know, go and test it with a few customers, uh, things like that. Or, you know, obviously we have a very big sales force um, that has a lot of market insight. Um, so sometimes there's a lot of internal work to kind of sound out 
do people believe that this is something worth pursuing? Um, I'm working actually with a new team now called the, the Center of Excellence for Asset Intensive Industries. Sounds um, impressive. Yeah. So, but, but what we do, which I really like, is that um, as part of, uh, I'm sort of broaching the gap between the product teams, the customer and the sale, sales organization. Um, and what that means in practice is that we have a select group of customers, um, like White House customers, and we show them concepts that we're working on as a product team and get them to talk about their business processes. How is this screen looking for them? What, and they might ask questions. So that's, that's a very, um, uh, a process I really enjoy. Yeah. Uh, as opposed, you know, and, and we have the complete opposite where customers will come to us and say, we've got this problem, it might be on an RFP, it might be, you know, for, for whatever commercial reason. And they say, we've got these gaps. We want, can you build us something? Oh, yep. What's your solution to X? And we also have architects and teams that, that do that and try and solve those problems. So it's kind of very, it sounds very integrated, right? It's kind of like building it together, um, which is yeah. Yeah, which is great because you've definitely got the customer at the end. Um, and you're, it's, it's not a matter of putting a lot of work in and then missing the mark and then having to do, do it again. Correct. Incredible. Yeah, so that, yeah. that's a really fun part of design. Um, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy that, that work. We, we also have, you know, we're, as I say, we're a large company, we have services as well. So, so something like offering how to innovate or how to implement design thinking or how to, you know, do those processes are obviously services that we sell as well. Mm. Absolutely. And then, and then just, you know, like in terms of COVID and, you know, and, um, you know, the shift to, um, you know, the new normal or wh however, whatever you want to call it. Um, what, what do you, what do you see? Um, that's unprecedented well? times. Yes. Unprecedented times. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, what do you see that's kind of working, working well in terms of innovation or inter or even, yeah, I, I think or even, yeah, sorry, we're going to be delayed. Or even even interesting um, or unexpected wins that you've that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Either or. Yeah. Uh, yeah look, look I, I guess it's it's like one of those um, uh, catalysts, nearly, if you like, for innovation, right? I, I think it's it's you know us being on Zoom uh, instead of meeting for a coffee uh, is like is like an example, right? A simple example. Um, but it has spurned a lot of um, thinking, uh, I think, of, of how could things be done differently. Yep. We, have a, we have a foundation, like a One Billion Lives initiative. Um, it's something that we do, have been doing for the last five or six years. It's, um, it's really championed by one of our board members, Adair Fox Martin. Uh, and it started here in APJ. Uh, and it's, it's about, you know, social enterprises, um, corporates, I guess giving back and doing something that, that often maybe it's um, volunteer based by our employees would, would often have a technology focus in, in some way or another. So um, in the past, we've done things like um, cancer genome work or, um, you know, uh, using blockchain for palm oil sustainability or, you know, so, so people will have ideas and we fund them internally. Um, with uh, NGOs or other parties. Um, so COVID is obviously, that, that became obviously a very big topic for us um, for initiatives like One Billion Lives. So we're, we, because we had that framework in place, we were able to kind of pivot uh, and say, right, now our next challenge or our next round, we'll, we're going to focus on that. Um, so... In, in Germany, obviously, we have very close connections with the, the government and things. So the, the kind of uh, COVID safe app that we have here in Australia, uh, in, in, in Germany, we developed a, a similar t style of the app uh, for the, with the coordination with the German government uh, that's been well received and, and quite successful, I understand. Um, I'm also hearing from customers, uh, uh, you know, that they're using our tools and technologies to address COVID situations nearly, we just say unexpectedly, but 
um, it's meant that they've been able to react. So things like, um, I don't know if you're familiar, we, we have a product suite called uh, Experience Management. Uh, it was the Qualtrics was the name of the company that we acquired. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah, so they were very quick to be able to bring out something for free to all the you know users um, to be able to like engage employee sentiment. How's mental health? How how are people um, handling the situation? Um, uh, yeah, so that's that's another example. Absolutely, yeah. Qualtrics, great great example. Mm -hmm. So you just have your kind of finger on the pulse of of all the org organizations that have it in there and have, know what trends that um, you need to address. Um, and how, how do you, how are you, how are you personally trying uh, to, um, are you staying motivated and, and, um, um, you know, uh, thinking, th you know, trying to, um, you know, given the context of the name of the show, reimagine, um, you know, I, I just got a, off a call with Australia Post and he was go going back to a lot more reading and, and, and looking at the, um, you know, the past kind of, um, you know, global financial crisis and, and things in the past that we've kind of had to deal with it um, on a global scale. What, what helps you kind of keep your mind thinking about the future and, and the possibilities? Yeah, for, for me, I think, um, you know, it, it's ebbed and flowed. Uh, I think, you know, we've had a couple of different lockdowns right now in Melbourne over the, over the last year. So in the first one, I think at first I was really you know, motivated to get, uh, involved in some projects that were, you know, parallel to to what I'd normally work on. So I did some things with my my daughter, you know, video projects and and different kind of fun fun little activities. You know, working from home, we did a little series of uh, funny videos. Um, yeah, so I think the second time round, though, I, I've spent a lot more time on learning. Uh, so we, you know, for me personally. Um, getting more interested in the total workforce management area. Uh, so I've spent a lot of time, you know, on, on that side of uh, things. Um, but I'm also, you know, involved in a lot of uh, activities through work um, that SAP provides. Um, so we, we have some, you know, recently we had an innovation challenge um, that I was a mentor on for a, a team uh, that's put together, a, you know, a bid that's it's been quite successful. Um, so th there's a number of sort of those activities where I feel like you can give something back, uh, you know, to your community. Um, yeah. Like I know you do, Chris, um, with yeah. the work that you do. Uh, yeah, so for me, that's, that's what I've been focused on. Yeah, absolutely. And it sounds like um, a really good um, culture there at SAP, you know, you've mentioned it a couple of times, purpose and these projects, which seem like quite fulfilling. Um, and then in terms of um, productivity, you know, um, the old, you know, the, the, the kind of argument about in-person versus remote, how's it, what's, what's your, what's your, what's your thoughts on that? I think, I think for a lot of us uh, at SAP, we're, we're quite familiar with the, the working from home practice um you know so so in some ways we're probably less affected i mean we're, we're pretty pretty lucky uh you know compared to a lot of industries being you know um, it or information services um we're probably at the forefront of those kind of orgs um so i kind of count my blessings in you know in these times to be you know in this kind of organization um uh, it has been a shift though from you know, you know, we have a long tail on the way we work. So our, our projects often delivered by our services teams, you know, they're not like one week engagements. They could be quite long. And the yeah. same with the sales cycle can be quite long. So um, I think, you know, if you look at the, our performance that, that they've announced in the, in the first quarters and whatever, it's, it's been pretty strong. Um, I think we're able to pivot pretty well to to being productive remotely. Um, but, you know, it's hard because it is a relationship uh, business. And, you know, what I miss probably the most is, is going in and having coffee with people and, and having that kind of water cooler or coffee chat. Um, so, I, I, and I think there's a degree of, um, you know, bonding or whatever that you do that, that is still hard to do 
over Zoom. Yeah, well, that's it. We're not we're not quite there yet. No one's quite cracked the um, the networking <laughs> component and the um, yeah, definitely not with people that we you know we 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 don't know or not familiar with. Um, Adam, I just want to say thank you very much for your time. Um, really learned a lot, and um, I think the audience has too. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for having me, Chris. It's a, it's a really interesting initiative. So look forward to seeing more episodes. Thank you.